I've been using the M4 iPad Pro with the iPadOS 26 over the last few days. This is the beta version, but in today's video, I'm gonna give you all my feedback since using iPadOS 26. Is it that good? Is it worth the hype that everyone is talking about? Subscribe to the channel, drop a comment below. Let's get started. iPadOS 26 dropped this Monday, and it was a very interesting update. It actually updated a lot for iPadOS. It changed everything. <laughs> It fixed most of my issues with the, the iPad Pro, especially the iPadOS. The file system, the multitasking, and the multiple audio sources support gave the iPad Pro a new life. And of course, the new multi-window managing just gave the iPad Pro a new look, very almost macOS y, I would say. We also have now a new pointer and a new menu system at the top. So iPadOS fundamentally changed the way that we use iPad Pro now with the iPadOS 26. So if you are excited, in today's video, I'm gonna try to show you all the new things, again, and I'm gonna give you my feedback on it. Because in the first video that I launched, lots of people and lots of you liked the video, 19 or 20,000 views, oh my God, but lots of you talked about how I showed you little images, showed you not that much information, and now I wanna give you my feedback on how it was to use. So let's put the iPad Pro into a stand and show you my favorite features. For the first thing that I actually enjoyed a lot in the last few days using iPadOS 26, was the mouse and pointer support. Anything that's changed with this mouse. As you can see, now you have a new pointer. But this new pointer brings a lot with it, so many new features. First, and the thing that I actually loved the most is whenever you click an email and you wanna close any type of app, you get these three dots right here. The red, yellow, and green. And the red, yellow, and green come from the Mac. Love this thing. Because now it enables you to close windows, minimize them, or expand them much more easily whenever you have a mouse, or your fingers, you can click it with a mouse, or you can open it up again, put the mouse right there, with your finger, come right here, and close it. So, yeah, it's much more simple to use and easy. Of course, whenever you also open, open up an app, for example, Microsoft Word, you can push up right here, and you will get all the menus, just like a Mac. So, have Word, File, Edit, Format, View, Window, and Help. And now, you can much easily use all the menus that you need, on these applications, which is also much, much more cool and much closer to using a Mac. Can enter my thesis for my course, for example, right here, and can come right here on the top, edit, cut, copy, paste, match, delete, find, wherever you want, just like a Mac. Whenever you don't wanna use it, come right here, click right here, oh, <laughs> sorry for that. You need to come right here. Well, this is an issue with using betas, but small the size, come right here, minimize it, and minimizes the app, or you can come right here, click the green, sorry for that, come right here, click the green, and boom, it's full screen. This is an awesome, awesome feature, and I think one of the, my favorite ones in the last few there days. Multi-window support is also being updated in this upgrade, and it's awesome. Guys, this is awesome. For example, can open up the calendar, right now it's on the full screen, but I can come right here, minimize it in terms of size, then, with the mouse, put it right there. Now, I wanna use my email to answer some emails, right there. Then, I think it's too big, I don't need the email to be this big, and I wanna use it with the calendar open, just right there, push it, put it right there, okay. Now, I wanna use, I don't know, I wanna do use ChatGPT, for example. Now, open it up, put it smaller, just like that, and then put it right there. And as you can see, now I have three apps open at the same time with multi-window support just like the Mac, and I click over right here, open up the calendar, right here, the email, and right here, ChatGPT, and I have everything that I want, everything that I need, easily usable with a mouse, pointer, just like a Mac, very, very easy. You can also use your finger, right there, right there, and right there. Oh, and then you can open up all the menu that you can want to use. For example, you can open up the photos, open it up, and you also have the last app right there. Really, really easy, I mean, just look at it, four apps at the same time, one, two, three, four, with the mouse, the new pointer, with your finger, easy, set, and then this is the best implementation that I've ever seen on a window management support on iPadOS. The new lock screen is also pretty cool. As you can see now, you can have the time much more visible, which makes easier to use the iPad because it has such a big screen, and have that time being so small does not make any sense. And whenever you unlock it, it also has a cool new animation. Let me just look at the camera. That's it. And as you can see, a completely new 
animation. But what comes with iPadOS 26 and iOS 26 is a new game app support. And this one right here, it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, you'll be able to see that I have all my games right here. Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Assassin's Creed, Real Racing, Call of Duty, <laughs> Angry Birds, any game that I want to play, I simply open it up and I play it. Let me see, for example, if I can open up Clash of Clans. Let me see if it's open. Now, it will open up the game. It tells you that it's an upgrade, but as you can see, open it up. Open the game support again. And now, you can open up, for example, Assassin's Creed. And it will start opening up Assassin's Creed. And it turns on the new game mode on the iPad Pro. It is now available that will focus all the things on the gaming side for the iPad Pro. Turn up the graphics card to the maximum. So turn up the uh, M4 chip to the maximum and optimize it for playing games, which is pretty, pretty cool. And also, you can minimize Assassin's Creed. You can put it up on a smaller size display, come right here, minimize it, and then you have Real Racing and other games. This also has implementations for friends, for example. Now, say my, 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 my friend is playing Classic Royale, or another friend of mine was playing Real Racing. Another friend of mine was playing Super Hexagon. So, it tells me what friends are playing, what are their points, what are their objectives, you can invite friends, and you can also play Apple Arcade, which is actually the main point of this app, is to have Apple Arcade. So this one is pretty, pretty cool. Also, the Calculator app, another app that has also been upgraded, and I think it's pretty, pretty cool now. You have also support for three um, variable equations, so you can now create graphs, 3D graphs, which are pretty, pretty cool. And yeah, Scientific Calculator, the new calculator app. Oh my God, I'm so happy that we have this already on the, the iPad. It has been for so long that we didn't have any type of good calculator app for the iPad Pro. The new preview app is also awesome because it allows me to preview any type of file. For example, this file right here. And this is for university. This was what my TPC that I need to do, my work homework. And I needed to do some type of annotation on this PDF. For example, I just simply can come right here and edit the PDF like, it's nothing. And it's a pretty cool feature because it allows me actually to use PDFs and to actually take notes on PDFs like not other before. Before I need to use files and then it was complicated. It did not have a special place for it. Now, Preview allows me to do that, take notes on PDFs or files and export them, crop them, edit PDFs like a proper app on the iPad now and on the iPhone. And I think it's pretty cool because before it was only available on the Mac and now it's another Mac app present on the iPad Pro. I love it. You can come right here, click, take notes, for example, highlight something with the Apple Pencil, bring the Apple Pencil and can highlight something that you want. For example, right here. Oh, I think it's, it's lagging out. Yeah, just lagged. That's the issue of having a beta, but it was supposed to let me actually take any type of annotations on the iPad Pro. Currently, it has a lag, so let's leave right here. You also have the new phone app, the journal app, don't use these two. Again, who makes calls on the iPad Pro? Does not make any sense. There are two other things that make the iPad Pro awesome now to being a computer replacement. And it's the new Files app. This one, it's pretty cool and it works great. For example, open up iCloud Drive or on, on my iPad and I want to open up the same file that it was before. If you select now, you also have now this menu app right here on the top, just like the Mac, which makes it much more useful. But if I come right here and I start to organize this in different ways, for example, come right here and organize it like that and choose list. Come, come right here and see all the informations, then come right here, they created it last open it up, kind, size, tags and iCloud status, can create folders now right here out at the top, cool, reasons, shared and this is much more closer now for the new or at least the new Finder that you can open up on Mac OS 26, which is pretty, pretty cool. And makes the Finder app or the Files app on your iPad Pro much more useful. As you can see, all my files on iCloud. And then iCloud Draw recently deleted. It's much closer to the Files app. And I think in the future, it will be much, much better. I think the next few upgrades, Apple will make this Files app even more powerful, closer to the Mac, but I think it's a good start. But the thing that makes this iPad Pro now, for me at least, a complete laptop replacement, it's it's not the new Files app, it's not all the new things that came and not the new multi-window support, but especially the new export settings on the iPad Pro. Now it, you can actually have multitask support on this iPad with no issues. For example, you can open up this project right here. This is for my TikTok for fitness. For example, click edit. And this is a complete file that you can see right here. Now I can click right here, which is the export button. Right, I think it's right there. 
and then choose, for example, no, not right there. I wanna, oh, oh yeah, I wanna share it. Video, audio only, current frame, or Final Cut Pro iPad project. Let's click on video. And then, smaller file size. Export, and it will start the export. Now, supposedly, I should be able to leave the app, like this, and it should be able to tell at the top that it's currently exporting. Let's open up Final Cut Pro. Well, currently not available, but it should be able to do that. At least Apple has announced it. And if it's not still available, I think it's a pretty, pretty critical feature that for me, it's the most important one. It's the capabilities for me to use the Final Cut Pro app while I'm doing other things. Leave the app, or for example, enter some emails, or for example, I wanna leave the app and check out some notes that I made up the, at the top while it's exporting all the things at the same time. If you are seeing this, currently it's not available on this version of the Final Cut Pro, or at least this version of, Mac, or of iPad OS 26. So maybe in the future it will, but Apple has announced it, so I'm pretty much sure it will come out in the next few updates. Let me see if I have any type of update. Let me see if I have some any type of update. Apple Intelligence is also pretty cool. I, I love the new cleanup features, but, oh, the new settings app is quite confusing. I, I, I've not gotten used to it, but it's quite cool. It looks different, looks beautiful. See if I have no, okay, it's up to date. So no beta versions available, but I think it's great. Let me, see, just, let me just check if you can use cleanup already on this iPad Pro. For example, let me just open up this image right here of me eating food. Put it up on the full screen for you to see. Click on edit. Wait, it's downloading the image. And then now, you should be able to show us the cleanup feature right here, cleanup. So click on cleanup and now it will download it, download cleanup, the image, then it will make ready for me to click any type of object. I will try to choose a sardine right here or any type of fish or a person, a glass, a plate, and then I can clean up this image. It will suggest me some things now to clean. Let me see what it can suggest. Wait a second. This is Apple intelligence to its finest. At least it's what most people, oh, I wanna clean up these tables right here. Don't wanna see any type of that. Just click it. This is what people has been requesting me the most outside of tech. So people wanna see how does it work? Oh, there you go. It's cleaned up. Mm, looks kind of weird at the top. If you don't really notice it, let me just clean up this thing right here. If you don't really notice it, it might look fine. For example, let's try to clean up this sardine right here. Just need to select it. There you go. It has selected a bit more of the plate as the sardine, then you click it. Boom. It has tried to do the job. I selected too much of the plate, but if I try to select some of these sardines, click them. And Apple Intelligence tried to do its best to remove the sardines, but this is the, then click up the reset button for me to reset all of these things because it did not do a great job. I think that it did a normal job removing the plates and the tables and the chairs. It's okay, click this thing right here, this thing right here, try to clean up this, and I think it has crashed. Yep, that's great. Don't use betas, guys, don't install betas, but I think this is a good getaway for me to close up all the things and actually tell you guys that iPadOS 26 was a big update. I love to use it. Back to Miguel for the future. And so, in my opinion, the iPad Pro changed a lot now with iPadOS 26. I've been using it for about four, four days, and since I've been studying a lot for exams, this is my main device now, and I gotta say, I love it. It's simply perfect. This new menu system, multitasking system, is perfect to study. You can have multiple windows spread out through the big 14-inch display. You can also have an incredible, incredible new way to manage files with the file system. File system now is much more easy to manage, much more information, easier to use, more intuitive and much more powerful. And of course, lastly, I can be multitasking. So I can be editing shorts, exporting shorts, and while I'm doing this, I can go back and study, watch a movie, watch a video. So. All the things that changed with this new iPadOS system changed a lot. And I love this new iPadOS 26 on the M4 iPad Pro. In my opinion, it finally makes the M4 iPad Pro a laptop replacement. But this is simply still the beta, the developer version, so there are still lots of bugs, lots of issues, so don't install iPadOS 26 on your main iPad Pro, on your main device, because it will give you lots and lots of bugs, the battery life will be trash, 
Although it hasn't been that bad, it will warm up, it will crash, it will bug. And if you need this device for serious work, don't install the developer beta. Wait until the public beta comes out, which is a bit more stable, or even wait until HyperOS 26 fully releases in September. Oh my god, such a big update and has been crazy for the last few days. Thank you guys for watching, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, bye bye.